Hi, how's it? Uh, we're in the second part. Well, it's not the second, actually. It's part 19, I think. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, guys. So I was explaining to you guys that I started to get, um, because I had gotten, I had taken benzoyl peroxide out of the way. Um, yeah, I had taken benzoyl peroxide out of the way. All right. But I still continued to apply this. No, sorry. I was explaining to you guys what happened to me during oil cleansing. In the middle of this part and the previous part, please go check it out to gauge your bearings. I did some admin. And so now I've lost my like you know, understanding, but we're here. I've, I've arrived again. Okay, yeah, no, I remembered. I, I remember that during the time when I was doing oil cleansing on my face, I was popping, I was glowing, but I started around my cheeks, especially the right side, uh, to get this like light sort of kind of you know these bumps, these small little bumps that were close in um, you know proximity to each other, and they were they had white like they look like white heads, but it was not white heads. White heads are not acne yeah they were pimply but they were small and in close proximity did not look like my regular hormonal acne that i get around my chin or even popping on my cheek or whatever yeah i got those and i was like what's going on and they were just kind of gathering around this especially my right cheek and i was like what is this what is this what is this this thing is worsening my condition I can't afford to have acne all over my face what's going on and then i went into youtube to research what's going on i was like does oil cleansing cause more acne why do i have all this like rash all over my face right looking acne and I found out that it's something called a uh, fungal acne right otherwise known as melesthesia folliculitis or pedicosporum folliculitis I'm um, entered into research about it and found out that it's fungal in nature it's not regular acne it is fungal acne caused by you know just a whole bunch of funky on the face and I was like okay so I guess if you are sensitive to fungal acne if you are sensitive to yeast production lots and lots of it on your face I guess oil cleansing is not for you and I was like but how is it not for me when it made my skin pop like this I like the radiance that it caused but now I've got this malassezia folliculitis issue going on so I um, I stopped because of this fungal acne and indeed lo and behold after stopping using uh, after I stopped oil cleansing the you know the other fungal acne it disappeared it left and I was still however getting the regular acne but you know we dealt with that already I continued with the benzoyl peroxide uh, now apparently when you use an antibacterial on fungi it just worsens the situation because uh, the good bacteria is what fights off yeast candida right uh, so an antibacterial kills all bacteria indiscriminately irrespective of whether it is good or bad so if you've got fungal acne you could actually exacerbate it by using an antibacterial Material. So the usage of oxy, it wasn't the oxy um, benzoyl peroxide, but it was the benzoderm benzoyl peroxide. Using that next to like oil cleansing just kind of exacerbated the situation because the benzoyl peroxide was also murdering good bacteria that could get rid, circumvent basically the you know fungal acne. I went online to research how to get rid of fungal acne and the advice I got I never really took it because all I had to do was stop oil cleansing for it to you know summer simmer down over a season but uh, I did not forget the advice that I got antifungal anything so there are people who would utilize for face wash antifungal shampoos that are there for dandruff purposes you can use it on your face to get rid of it or any kind of antifungal perhaps uh, over-the-counter or prescription ointment that your doctor would say use this in order to deal with your fungal acne I did not do that I didn't have money of course to purchase any such products so I just had to let it simmer down after stopping with the, um, the situation uh, so I realized I was one of those sensitive people I've got an overdrive of like you know just excessive yeast production uh, on my body can't deal so you're gonna have to just get about the benefits that you gain from oil cleansing because the cons far outweigh the pros so I was like uh, I really like the way that my skin looked during the time I was oil cleansing but who in the world wants bumps all over their face that they don't even know what they are because they, they don't look like regular pimples they're more vastly scattered across your face than regular pimples and they just make you look you know, that rough texture taking away from the glow that we're gunning for here that dewy uh, complexion but nonetheless that information was banked at the back of my mind so never really left me I learned it good was lovely during the time that it lasted say la vie you know what I mean like see you later bon voyage we copy diemed we seized the day and it didn't work so really and truly moving on oil is not for me but I loved the way that the oil worked on my face so I, I entered into a season where I was like okay let's see if we don't 
oil cleanse because oil cleansing literally you are rubbing the oil into your face you're rubbing it in so maybe that's what exacerbated the situation and everybody knows that uh, fungi thrives in heat moist and ever so humid environments so when you rub in that's friction so what if I didn't rub in I told myself that what if I didn't rub the oil in but just kind of let it hang out on the surface just you know apply it and move on not you know drive it into my skin like oil cleansing what would that achieve I imagined I asked so I purchased coconut oil from Diskem. Now, the coconut oil that I purchased, I did not buy it for the purpose of oil cleansing. I purchased it because I got more counsel, more advice on the internet about the antibacterial incredible power of, uh, what is this, of coconut oil, that it has got more impact against P. acne's bacteria even than benzoyl peroxide. The ingredient that is the powerhouse punching factor in the coconut oil is something called lauric acid, right? And if you don't struggle with oily skin already, if it does not give you problems already, like when I was busy researching oil cleansing, if you don't have, you know, bad reactions to highly comedogenic oils on your face, you could actually co you know, in incorporate coconut oil into your skincare routine as a means of combating acne. So I was like, mm, okay, well, I do have some highly, like, oily skin, so I need oils that are lower on the comedogenic scale, and coconut oil is not one of them. Neither is avocado oil. We should just, like, you know, keep light with things like grapeseed maybe castor oil if we are pushing it to you know you know the middle the median range of comedogenesis here but let's 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 see i mean the counsel of this lady for me was like i mean if, if it's more like hectic in dealing with acne sometimes than benzoyl peroxide i'm gonna try it because i'm trying to get away from benzoyl peroxide i'm really trying to leave benzoyl peroxide okay uh, for the reasons that i have highlighted in the previous part to this one so i purchased um, this coconut oil, which is extra, um, which is a cold pressed virgin organic uh, from this chem, right? It's for cooking, but really coconut oil, whatever you can, you potato, potato, doesn't matter whether it's for skin hair, as long as it's the real deal, organic, 100% coconut oil. I bought this from this a couple of months back and... I was like, you know what? Uh, well, I, I bought this. This is like the second tub that I've purchased back then. Like, guys, this has been a, like perhaps two year journey that I'm on right now, right? So, this is not two years old. This is maybe like six months old, this coconut oil. Okay, cool. Beans and bananas. And the reason why it's still here after six months is because I stopped using it, okay? However, prior to that, I had basically um, sworn by it because I saw that it worked. I bought it, started to apply it, but not in oil. I didn't oil cleanse with coconut oil. I can't. My skin type is it doesn't accommodate I'm too oily for that but I I experimented essentially with the counsel of that lady that I got it was these two like ladies these beautiful women from um they're Asian, but they live in the U in the UK. All right, Beauty Within. Yes, that was the the channel, the YouTube channel where I got that counsel. Yeah, okay. So I took the advice from these ladies from Beauty Within, and I basically just them speaking about how coconut oil can be more combative of acne um, if you oil cleanse with it. If it doesn't give you acne, if you are not sensitive to the comedogenic nature of the coconut oil, it could actually be better than benzoyl peroxide. So I I tried it, and but however, just a small little amount, like a tiny little, you know, I would literally scoop it with a back of my hand like that just in the bottle Doop. on my hand um generously apply it moisturize my hands with it first so i don't have too much of it on my hand and then apply it as a sealant i put it on as a sealant at the end of my skincare routine so i would apply everything put everything on my face first and then the coconut oil would be the last thing that goes on and I saw a difference, but I was still using, what do you call this? I was still using benzoyl peroxide at the time, right? Guys, it made my skin glow. It gave me lusciousness. It was anti-aging in the worst way. I saw just my skin getting brighter. Like, I, you know, I was using vitamin C or something. It, and I loved the texture of my face. Basically, you know the effect that I was talking about with the oil cleansing that made me look all dewy, but it was giving me like rash vibes because of, or, uh, you know, pit, like, Melis, melicu, like for melisies of folliculitis vibes was giving me fungal acne vibes when I was busy going in with the gra my my uh, oil cleansing was like grapeseed oil with you know a carrier oil car castor oil is what I used castor oil okay yeah that's what I did and I was, I was like oh, no I'm not feeling this so I stopped but the dewy nature um, I loved that and I gained somewhat of that dewy look from what I did with the coconut oil I just hoid it on the surface but I used it with benzoyl peroxide and the combination, my acne was not, I mean, look, I, I've 
been struggling like i told you guys in my earlier part that after getting off racketin years ago the doctor put me on a bd protocol which was benzoyl peroxide and differin um i then lost everything differin was no longer uh, i could not purchase it over the counter i needed a script for that so i just settled for benzoyl peroxide and benzoyl peroxide five percent was what i used and it worked like wonders it kept my skin clear after the um the, the, the racketin after getting off racketin it kept my skin clear for years after that literally years but then somewhere along the way like benzoyl peroxide i stopped using it once because i had i lost the ability to be able to purchase it okay and when i went back to which i just was not getting my skin back like it was taming my acne but it was not putting it to bed altogether every so often i would get acne hormonal especially around my period and you know what happens with acne once you get a spot you get a dark spot once you get a spot you get a dark spot so i was dealing with just these like funny little brown patches dark spot patches all over my face because i got a breakout and for me it's like i, I can't afford even one because it takes so long to get rid of that dark spot so really what's the point what's the point and my sister gave me like she donated some products uh, to me that she was no longer using and among the products that she was using was a benzoyl peroxide 10 percent uh from the united states she brought it from the u.s right it was not available in south africa by i, I think it was neutrogena it was a 10 percent benzoyl peroxide cream and i i used it after my benzoyl peroxide five percent finished i used that one and my acne cleared again where it was not coming back not even around my period i was like yes 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 got it but then i got off my sister's my sister's little um, benzoyl peroxide 10 percent finished of course and then i went back to buying the five percent and my skin just was not trying to like have less percentage worth of benzoyl peroxide on my face so i still broke out despite using the five percent because it was a lower concentration i had gotten my skin used to 10 percent and now it was a junkie of 10 percent that then caused me to like i said um struggle with acne for a very long amount of time and that's when i made a decision that i want to get off benzoyl peroxide because what in the world like first of all so Africa does not have 10%. I could not find, I promise you guys, I could not find it anywhere. Recently, Oxy started to produce a product that was 10%. Uh, but the only benzoyl peroxide that you would find out here in these streets was the 5% by Benzoderm. There was not, there was no alternative until recently. Okay, so finally, uh, Oxy made one for 10%, but it is not nearly close at all to the quality of Benzoderm uh, benzoyl peroxide. But I believe it did um, keep my acne at bay. It did. So I started to buy the 10%, but not before first getting a whole bunch of acne scarring, a whole bunch of dark spots a whole you know and then they manufactured this product and i was like voila thank you jesus for this um alternative but then something inside me was always like i don't want to carry on with benzoyl peroxide because mm, like i don't want my skin addicted to none of this like is it possible to just do better like is it and around the same time that's when i started you know with my drinks and my what have dealing with situations from inside out blah blah and it took a good year, year and a half for my skin to finally react to all the interventions that I had embarked on to cleanse myself from the inside out. You know, my finger Greek drinks and whatnot. I told you guys about that in the previous parts to this one. So that helped. Like a year and a half of basically cleansing my system, rebalancing my hormones, my endocrine system through diet. That went a long way. It went a massive way. All right. Uh, and because of what, what I was doing internally, my reliance on benzoyl peroxide was literally like just exterminated by Jesus. I asked him, I begged him, I was like, Lord, I don't want to lean on benzoyl peroxide. And during the time when I was asking him, I remember thinking, but you're ignoring my prayers. You know, I don't want to go back to benzoyl peroxide. I would stop buying it at the store, trying something else and you know, hope to see, like crossing my fingers that nothing, you know, would, would suffice, you know, ne negatively on my face. And so doing this thing and the acne would come back and I would go back to the Lord and I'd be like, but I asked you to help me get off benzoyl peroxide. I don't want this. I don't want this reliance. I don't want it. And it turns out that the Lord heard me. You know, the Bible says, ask and you will find a knock and the door will be open to you. Seek and you will find. Guys, the Lord says, ask and you will be given you. Praise down, shaking together and running over. But with us, we don't, we don't realize that when the Lord answers prayer, it is a process. It has a journey. It starts from somewhere. He happens you upon that which will bring your answered prayer about providentially. He gives you counsel but you know patience is is a virtue patience is a fruit of the holy spirit and when you wait something when 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 the lord gives you counsel or an idea or an 
a, a nugget of understanding about something, you have to wait to see it come to pass. Because if you don't wait, you're going to make mistakes. All right. It's like the story of Sarah and Abraham. You know how the Lord promised them Isaac like long ago already. But they didn't believe. They didn't believe, right? Uh, and so, because they did not believe, they had little faith. The two of them, they went on right ahead and made Ishmael through Hagar. But uh, Isaac came. Isaac came anyway, right? Isaac ultimately did come. And if Isaac was not, uh, if if Abraham and Sarah were not impatient concerning Isaac, they would not have had the issue in between with Ishmael. And now, what we are dealing with as a globe is the war in the Middle East that is currently going on between Ishmael and Isaac. It is still raging in the Middle East because two people decided that they're not going to be patient. They're not going to wait. They're not going to trust God. They're going to go on right ahead and create a promised child in a way that the Lord did not quite, you know what I mean? Like give them counsel or ability or permission to do. They did things their way, making like Frank Sinatra and in a lack of patience, ultimately now today, like I said, there is a war raging in the Middle East because of the, separ- the segregation, the separation, the, um, what is this? What I want to uh, say persistence uh, and to them being the chosen people of God war in the Middle East. We have got that whole entire religion that I shall not make that of Islam basically because of the mistake of Sarah in not trusting God, of Abraham in not trusting God. So when the Lord gives you a, 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 a trajectory, a five-year plan, a two-year plan, when he gives you something because you asked for something else in prayer, um, understand that God knows what fruit it's going to produce in due season and if you just stick to it if you hang 10 if you hold on tight it'll ultimately bear the fruit that you wanted to in the end so for me my Isaac was getting off benzoyl peroxide and having clear skin that is basically regulated from the inside out that I might not lean or rely on medication that is not healthy for um, things like pregnancy like everybody knows what happens with a baby uh, when in the belly when you are on Roaccutin it's, it's, it, it can cause birth deformities I thought I would have to go back on Roaccutin to subside my acne because it was the only thing that made sure that it was gone and for years I thought I would have to go back on that but I like I said I've got a geriatric womb but I'm older but if I got married tomorrow I would probably fall pregnant day after tomorrow that's how much I want children okay so I I don't have the luxury once I get my life back together again to be going on medication like like uh, what is this racketin which is not safe for pregnancy and stuff like that plus during pregnancy topically you can't apply things like benzoyl peroxide so what in the world would keep the acne at bay during pregnancy I needed something that was like a permanent fix something that was going to basically mean be for me a clearance of my skin from the inside out but uh, the Lord knew that that's what ne- was needed. I didn't, however. But thanks to embarking on a journey to grow my hair, embarking on a journey to clear my skin, I found out that, you know, take these superfoods, drink this, blah, blah, water, water, uh, fish paste, and, you know, it'll help you with your fitness when you work out. It'll help you with this and that. So that whole thing that I tried ultimately benefited my skin in a very Isaiah way, in the sense that it gave me the baby that I wanted at the age of 90, as opposed to the age of 25, but the baby came so it took a while for my skin to clear from the inside out but I stuck to it I stuck to continuing with any Greek I started to continuing with my drink I, I continued in my health endeavors inwardly uh, and the results only came a year year and a half later like the full results where there was no longer any breakouts on my face it only happened that much time later and it, it, it is just such a, a, a telling testimony of the power of waiting, of, of just patience. When you can tell in your gut, when you have heard that still silent voice from God, when, you, when you've been counseled by Jesus to do something, even if it does not bear the fruit that you wanted to straight away, only recall that the fruit of patience is from the Holy Spirit. And if you wait, you will ultimately see the fruits of righteousness. If you are patient, you will reap what you have sown in that patience. You you will, after suffering for a little while, be restored to everything lacking in nothing. God heard my prayers when I was like, I don't want to do benzoyl peroxide anymore. And he put me on these, like, you know, plans. And I got frustrated when I kept on going to the store and buying products. When I did find money, okay, when I was given, enabled, I, I kept on going to the store to see, okay, what am I going to use to replace? Because I asked God, so he said, ask and you will be given. 
and so I'm just going to basically find something here yeah, I'm gonna find something uh, that's going to clear my skin I was looking for a topical solution meanwhile the Lord had said that the, the, the answer to your prayers are yes and amen so I you asked me yes I'll clear your skin I'll clear it without benzoyl peroxide um, Garabo however went and grabbed Hagar okay she grabbed Hagar what I did was when I know when I saw that my face was not clearing as quickly as I would have loved to when I got off the benzoyl peroxide I tried all different kinds of other things and I got off benzoyl peroxide and after two weeks uh, three weeks of noticing that my acne was just it kept coming back it kept coming back I was like mm -mm, I, I need something better and that's when I went for oxy 10 that's when I went to Diskim scanned my eyes all throughout the shelves and I finally found 10% oxy benzoyl peroxide again like the Neutrogena that my sister had I finally found the 10% and upon finding the 10% I was like okay well I mean I guess God didn't really care to heed the fact that I didn't want to carry on with benzoyl peroxide anymore um, but hey at least he gave me 10% that is affordable and that is in South African stores you know I don't have to go and buy it online uh, and whatnot and deal with like shipping and all that jazz and the like exorbitant prices for delivery okay fine I guess Jesus didn't hear me he didn't care to like engage that I actually don't want to be on bezel process anymore like I said I don't wanna but I mean he's keeping me on it so I guess cool and I grabbed the, the product because it was the initial stages of the product they were basically piloting it okay it was cheap it was like the 10 percent was 10 was was um sorry 50 something rands if anything i think it was 40 something rand right it was cheap it was cheap it was half like a fraction of the price of like a double the size of a tube in the benzoderm five percent so i was like i found myself a cheap oxy 10 uh you know benzoyl peroxide 10 percent mm, it's nice and cheap that was perhaps seven months ago five six seven months ago and a good five six seven months later and now it's double the price because people have tested it and now they swear by it and now the price has literally doubled it has doubled it, it is currently 90 something rands if you go to the uh, 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 guinea just came shelves it's it's almost a hundred bucks now for the 15 gram tube guys and I was like um is it 15 grams or 75 I don't, whatever it's 50, I think it's 15 yeah no it is now that price you guys and I was like this thing is now almost as expensive if, if no it's actually as expensive as the smallest tube of benzoyl peroxide by benzoderm 5% and I was running away from the benzoderm 5% because one it did not work anymore on me and it was too expensive and you know even though a little went a long way I just I'm too broke to be buying things that cost that much uh, yeah so when I saw at the discam literally just this price skyrocketed within the, the past two or three months when I went and I saw that it was sitting at double the price that that I used to buy it for I was like wow they're like um, Salatone hmm? who two year, three years ago used to sell their snail gel for 250 bucks for 50 mils and now it's 400 just three years later um, we understand inflation is a thing but not like that and again you know this is a luxury product it's not like a staple like food or bread or whatever so what's going on here you know when you tell when a, when a product works well on people and they buy it and they start to swear by it the manufacturers then double the price and without shame it's just so exploitative it's just frankly I think it's unsavory business practices but anyway they continue you know they're a company they get to like price a, a product at the range that they want to but they get people hooked onto their products and then they just balloon the prices and that's what happened and the Lord was like this is what happened Karabo when you went and produced um, Ishmael baby girl hmm? you created an Ishmael for yourself honey boo and so for those reasons your mama Hagar the Ishmael's mama Hagar has gone right ahead to like double the price of the kit baby he's like look at, look at what he, Hagar did it. and I was like God but I mean my skin was still breaking out my skin was still breaking out so I mean what was I supposed to do just like Sarah being like what was I supposed to do do I was getting old my husband he needed my husband needed an heir and so I mean this chick was around <laughs> and she was happy to like you know give you a baby so I mean come on like what was I supposed to do that's what we do when our when our prayers don't get answered like immediately we, we go on and we say to God what was I supposed to do and you justify not trusting him and then next thing Hagar has doubled the price of Ishmael herein lies the um oxy you know product range doubling the price of benzoyl peroxide 10% because people started to lean on it and it was at that stage when I noticed that it was double the price that I was like you know what I'm gonna go and right ahead and experiment and see if I can just kick this thing to the curb like a soccer ball and not buy it I had the money recently I could have just grabbed it because you know 
I'm scared I'm going to break out. But I decided this time around to walk by faith. By faith that the Lord has given me what I asked for in prayer. And this is the result. A good, I think it's been three weeks now since I got off Oxy. Since I got off benzoyl peroxide at all. And there is still nothing. But we're going to give you uh, extra explanations of the whole journey coming up. That we might seal this in an explosive pinnacle. An apex that's going to make you know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Next part.